Hi, this is Charles Haley, five-time Super Bowl champ. And my name is Lori Lynch, Senior Vice President, Customer Success for my station. And we want to welcome you to our reading series called iStation Reads in partnership with Tackle Tomorrow. Charles and I are excited to introduce this amazing reading series where you're going to hear from a lot of personalities reading iStation books. We'll ask you some questions at the beginning of each story and by the end we'll follow up to see if you've got the right answers. So join us for each episode. You'll see us on iStation's YouTube channel. If you love it, share us on social media. We look forward to working with you, and as Charles always says, It doesn't matter where you start, it's where you finish. You're so right, Charles. Okay, everybody, let's get started. Hey, everybody. Lori from iStation here. Boy, do we have an exciting story for you guys today. We also have an exciting personality that's going to be reading it. So let me introduce you to someone that many folks know, and that would be Nancy Lieberman. So Nancy Lieberman is nicknamed Lady Magic, kind of a play on Magic Johnson back in the day from the Lakers, but nicknamed Lady Magic. She is a former pro basketball player and coach in both the NBA and the WNBA. She is regarded as the greatest in American women's basketball. Inducted into the Basketball Hall of Fame and the Women's Basketball Hall of Fame, silver medal winner in the 76 Olympics, two-time Olympian, and sports broadcaster for ESPN and the NBA, amongst many, many other uh, things that she's involved in. She is an amazing woman and has given a lot back to the sport of basketball and is just a role model for a lot of female athletes out there in the world. So one of the things that Nancy shared with us on the importance of reading was read, and with an exclamation, read. Read things that you love. Read things that inspire you. And that was something that she left us with. And you'll hear her say that as she's uh, reading a story. And she's actually going to read a story about herself. She's going to read a story called Basketball's Magic Lady. And it's really a great story. It goes through a little bit of autobiographical information about Nancy as she's growing up and becoming the amazing athlete that she became. So these three questions are, are going to be pondered while we're listening to Nancy read the story. So number one. Where did Nancy say her family could usually find her? Number two, did Nancy find it easy growing up and wanting to be a female basketball player? And why or why not? So let's really think about that question. And number three, what college did Nancy end up playing women's basketball? So she had some heavy recruits going on, but where'd she choose to go? So listen closely. I'll meet you at the end of the story. We'll do a review of the questions, and then we'll move on to the next section. So I'll see you in just a bit. Hi, everybody. Uh, this is Nancy Lieberman, and it's an honor and a privilege for me to uh, spend a little bit of time reading uh, to you. And I wasn't the greatest reader when I was young, but I fell in love with sports, so anything on sports kind of got me reading and interested and just seeing what other people, athletes, celebrities were doing. So this is really important. Reading everything I do uh, as a player, as a coach, it's about reading, it's watching film, and then sharing it with other people. So a little bit about me. Uh, I'm a two-time Olympian. I uh, won the silver medal in 1976 on the first women's Olympic basketball team. 1980, we had the boycott. Uh, I went to Old Dominion University where we won back-to-back -back national championships in 1979 and 1980. We were women's basketball at that time. We had a tremendous impact on the growth of the game. Uh, then I played for the Los Angeles Lakers in 1980 uh, for some coach named Pat Riley, uh, who coached the Lakers and Magic Johnson uh, to championships. And fortunate enough, even though I didn't have a women's professional league in my prime, uh, I played for the Utah Jazz in their summer league. Uh, I played two years in the United States Basketball League, which is a men's league, and came back and played in the WNBA in the inaugural season in 1997 and played for the Phoenix Mercury. After we made the playoffs, the next year I coached, coached in the WNBA with the Detroit Shock, 
and then there was this great shift in my career, which I thought had already been like pretty phenomenal and blessed. But in, in 2010, I was asked to be the first female head coach in a men's professional league uh, by the Dallas Mavericks affiliate in the NBA D League, which is now the G League. And so I coached the Texas Legends in our first year. We made it to the playoffs. And that kept me on the NBA side. Uh, 2015, I was hired to be the second female assistant in the history of the NBA, which was pretty cool. And 2018, some guy named Ice Cube hired me to be uh, the first head coach, female head coach in the in the the Big Three league. Former NBA players, Hall of Famers, or coaches, and my team, Power, won the championship in in front of. 18,000 people at Barclay Center in New York and over a million viewers on TV. And it was an extraordinary night. So I've been really lucky um, to fall in love with this game. Uh, more importantly, this is what I do. I'm a mom, uh, my son TJ, uh, I remember reading to him quite a bit. So I'm ready to read my book, Basketball's Lady Magic. I'm gonna flip that. She, Betty called me the magic lady, but my nickname is uh, Lady Magic. So in chapter one, darkness had fallen, but the kids on the school grounds in Far Rockaway, New York kept playing. The light on the street corner provided some light, but not much. The players on the basketball court had a hard time seeing. If the basket had had a net, they could have listened for the swish of the ball uh, as the ball went through, but there was no net. Instead, kids listened for the ping of the ball hitting the rim. Nancy Lieberman was the only girl on the court. At 11, she wasn't as tall as some of the older boys. Still, Nancy tried to outjump them, out elbow, out maneuver, out hustle everybody else. Usually, she was one of the first players chosen for the team. When the evening games finally broke up, Nancy stayed on the court to practice. She worked on her left hand hook, a back handed dribble. The shot was a specialty of her idol, Willis Reed, and the backhanded dribble was a favorite of another idol uh, of the New York Knicks guard, Walt Frazier. Nancy Lieberman was determined that those two moves would soon be her specialties too. After one last shot, Nancy left the court and walked down the street. Long before the young player was home, in the middle of a loud argument with her mother, Mrs. Lieberman was worried about her daughter. She couldn't understand why basketball was so important to an 11 year old girl. She tried to reason with Nancy, but the young girl stubbornly refused to listen. Arguments between the two were becoming more and more frequent. Tonight's discussion had started like many others before it. Give up basketball, Mrs. Lieberman uh, had urged. Get out of those blue jeans and t-shirts, wear dresses, be like your, your girlfriends, Nancy. Sports aren't for girls. As Nancy leaned, as Nancy listened to her mother, her face colored, matching her fiery red hair. No, mom, she shouted. No, I don't want to be like a girl, like girlfriend, my girlfriends. I want to be me. Why? Why aren't sports for girls? Tell me why. Because, Nancy, because. Give up basketball, it's for boys. Nancy's eyes flashed, her freckled face twisted in anger. She stood with her hands on her hips, stamped her foot. No, she answered, no, I can't give up basketball. Nancy glared with determination. Sports are for girls. You wait and see. I'm going to make history one day, she said. By 1980, only 10 years later, Nancy's youthful boast had come true. She had become one of the best known athletes, women athletes in America. At 18, she won a silver medal at the 1976 Olympics, Summer Olympics in Montreal. Earlier that year, she had become the most widely recognized high school player in, his, in the history of women's basketball. Nearly 100, 100 colleges and universities recruited her. No woman had ever received such attention as a collegiate star. Nancy was the first two-time winner of the coveted Wade Trophy. 
When Nancy turned pro at 21 years old, she became the highest paid player in the history of the women's basketball in, women, in professional basketball. Supporters of the Women's Basketball League hailed her as the Pele of the young WBL, a driving force capable of energizing an entire sport. By 1980, Nancy Lieberman's place in sports history record books was secure. She had indeed made history. Nancy began to play basketball when she was 10 years old. Ever since she can remember, I have been athletic, Nancy said. As a child, I was always playing sports, football, baseball, basketball, with kids in my neighborhood. There were lots of guys around. So I played football with them quite a bit. My mother really upset, uh, uh, my mother was really upset because of my playing football. I would look out in the yard and see a pile of helmets and bodies, but no Nancy, Miss Lieberman recalls. Then I realized that she was under all of that. Nancy's mother was horrified. She made a decision, no more football for Nancy. So my football career came to a rather sudden end, Nancy said with an impish grin and my interest turned to baseball and basketball. About the same time, I signed to play on a, P a police athletic league team, baseball team. I was one of the best players on the team, but just a few days before the first game, the official said I couldn't be on the PAL team because I was a girl and they would not insure. I could not be insured. I turned, I turned from baseball to basketball. The Hartman Y in Far Rockaway let me play in their boys league. On the playgrounds, Nancy was the only girl playing basketball. Some of the guys gave her a hard time because she was a girl. Tomboy, go play somewhere else. Some of them would yell at her. Go away. We don't want you to get hurt. But Nancy refused to go away. She practiced one-on-one -on -one moves. Since she couldn't jump as high as some of the boys that she was playing against, she practiced jumping. At home, she tried to touch the ceiling, first with her fingertips, then with her palms, finally with her elbows. I didn't know that I was practicing, she said. I just thought that I was having fun. Nancy's determination and hard work soon began to pay off. She started to earn the respect of the older kids on the playground. We'll take Nancy, they said picking her ahead of boys who were bigger and older. My playground experiences were good to me, Nancy said. I had to work twice, twice as hard to be, uh, I had to work twice as hard. As I got bumps and a lot of bruises and a lot of ribbing at first, I had to hustle to pick up and to hustle to play. I had to be quicker. I had to be more aggressive. The neighborhood kids played for hours on the school, uh, on the playground, six, seven hours a day. When school was out, Nancy, Nancy played up to 12 hours a day. Nancy's favorite basketball team was the New York Knicks, and her favorite player was Walt Frazier and center Willis Reed. Nancy's number at Old Dominion was number 10, Walt Frazier's number. Willis Reed's number 19. That would have been my first choice, she once told her reporter but they didn't have 19. Willis was always my idol. I had posters of him, um, made collages of him. And I was a big fan of Frazier too. I loved the way he played defense. I liked his style. He was a showman without being a show off. A few, a few years later, fans and sports writers, the exact same, would use the same description when they talked about Nancy's playing style. My mom would really get upset with me. I can remember her coming down to the schoolyard three or four times a day. She'd ask, Nancy, aren't you ready to come in? You should be studying. Don't you want to call your girlfriends? Nancy's grandparents, Lou and Eva Sachs, also tried to convince her not to spend so much time playing basketball. Grandma wanted me to be a young lady. She liked to dress me up like a doll. I didn't like to get all dressed up like the other kids. I just lived in my sneakers, jeans, and t-shirts. Now, I kid my family about it. I remind them how much money they saved um, on clothes. Nancy grins as she recalls. I realize now it must have been a real comedy act. At the time, none of us saw any humor in this situation. 
for a while, we thought we were going to have to decide what was going to have to stay in the house. Would it be the basketball or would it be grandma? Grandma and grandpa lived in Brooklyn will come out to the house. I would walk by and say, hi, grandma, see you later. Then I'd kiss her hello as I was going out. Nancy laughs. Grandma and grandpa probably had neck strains for years when they were turning to watch me leave the house. My family just couldn't understand why I enjoyed basketball so much. But I was very, very hard-headed. And I couldn't understand why anybody would object. I wasn't getting in trouble. I wasn't stealing. I wasn't taking drugs. I certainly wasn't running the streets. My family always knew where I was. I was down on the playground playing basketball. Nancy's family hoped that she would outgrow her obsession with basketball. Neither Nancy nor her family foresaw, not even in their wildest dreams, that someday she would become world famous. Dreams do come true. At the Olympic trials, Nancy was one of 12 girls chosen. Her aggressive style, Pan-American experience, and obvious potential for the future were crucial factors in her selection. Nancy was headed to Montreal. Lucy Harris, the six foot three center of the national champion Delta State, and Ann Myers of UCLA were the best well-known players on the team. Only 17 when she made the team, Nancy knew she would be a reserve. All she could expect were brief moments of sporadic off the bench play, but years of street ball had made Nancy fearless and intimidating. Olympic coach Billy Moore, then at Cal State Fullerton, but now at UCLA, was press, impressed by the youth hoopster, the young hoopster's physical play. In a qualifying match against Bulgaria, Moore sent Nancy in off the bench, hoping that she could neutralize a player that the American defense had not been able to stop. Determined to block the Bulgarian shot, Nancy almost immediately crashed into her helpless, hapless opponent. When the two teams met again in the Olympics, Nancy had, an, had obviously won respect. Every time the Bulgarian coach put the girl in, Billy put me in, and I, all I had to do was get close to her and she would get rid of the ball. She wanted no part of me. Nancy's scrappy hustle was ideal for the fast physical play allowed by international rules. But the youth and inexperience of Nancy and teammates placed the American team at a decided disadvantage. The communist countries had been training, for the, training their team for years. We only had five weeks together. By the time the team was selected, it was almost time for the games, Nancy explained. Despite its underdog status, the young American team survived the grueling qualifying rounds. They joined five other teams, Bulgaria, Canada, Czechoslovakia, Japan, and Russia in the second round of Olympic competition. The team's surprisingly strong performance performance had far-reaching effects. During the Olympics, we were in the spotlight as women's basketball had never been before. Montreal helped to change the Americans' attitudes towards women in basketball. We silenced a lot of critics. Nancy laughs and adds any lingering doubts that my mom might have had uh, about her daughter playing certainly vanished when she got five tickets for Montreal Olympics. Still. They didn't do much. They didn't do her much good. I'm sure my mom is the only person to sit through the Olympics with her hands over her eyes. She couldn't bear to watch. She was so afraid that we were going to mess up. Mrs. Lieberman's fears were unfounded. The gritty young American team captured the silver medal. Unbeaten for more than a decade, Russia won the gold medal. The Soviet Union had a seven foot two, 250 pound center, Yuliana Semenova, had been overwhelming favorite prior to the game. As Nancy reminisces about the 1976 Olympics, she speaks proudly of the American team's attitude and accomplishments. We made an extra super effort, even though we were tired and hurting. We had to get up at 4.30 in the morning for 6 a.m. practices. When you try out, you do it for yourself. 
but when you get on the floor, you're doing it for your country. You're representing millions of Americans. You want it to go the right way. Yes, we lost to the Russians, but they were far superior to any team in the world. The feeling of being on that Olympic victory stand was incredible. I had seen it dozens of times on TV, and there I was. Can you believe the feeling of lining up and bowing your head so they can put the medal around your neck? There were thousands of American flags waving. I had never been so proud and happy in my life. It was the ultimate experience. For two long years, Nancy worked hard towards those brief moments of Olympic glory. Now, all too quickly, it was all over. Fortunately, Nancy didn't have time to let down. She was facing one of the most important decisions of her life. The fall semester was rapidly approaching and Nancy had still not selected a college. A few weeks earlier at the Olympic tri training camp, Nancy had narrowed her choices down to four schools, Cal State Fullerton, UCLA, St. John's of New York, and Old Dominion. I had to narrow my choices. The phone was always ringing. I was getting stacks of mail and I wanted to concentrate on the Olympics and not have all that pressure. In August, less than one month before classes began, Nancy announced her choice, the Lady Monarchs of Old Dominion University. I chose Old ODU for several reasons. They didn't have a football team to funnel all the funds. Basketball was the number one sport on campus. Old Dominion had made, it, made a commitment to women's basketball. I liked the people. They weren't hustling me. I liked the area, and it wasn't that far from home. Uh, a impish grin lights at Nancy's face as she talks about her decision. Of course, the fact that Pam Parsons called me every day for four months had nothing to do with my decision. Even after we signed Nancy, I didn't believe she was coming to ODU Parsons, recalls. It was hard to realize how good the kid was. Everybody in the country wanted her. She was still getting mail from other schools even after she enrolled. Old Dominion was simply a challenge that Nancy couldn't turn down. I could have gone to the national champion, Delta State. I could have gone to UCLA, Nancy says. But in a sense, all my life, I've been an underdog. Why should I start off on the top? I wanted to be part of something that could be built. A lot of people said I was making a dreadful mistake, they told me. You'll never make make it in a national tournament. You'll never make an All-American because you'll never get publicity. No one will ever see you play. And I thought, just wait, we'll see who's right. You or me, we'll see. Um, sometimes as I'm reading it, I'm just saying what I really know and not reading it in some areas the way it was written, but read. Read things that interest you. Read things that you love, that inspire you. Because one day, somebody is going to have a book. One of you are going to have a book. And you're going to sit back and you're going to get a chance to look and, and just think how blessed you are, uh, what's happened in your life and in your career. And I never take for granted, not one day, um, how people treat me, how they talk about me. Um, I, want to, I want to be an inspiration. So I feel so, I feel so appreciative to be able to be a part uh, of this reading program. So thank you so much. Uh, be well, stay safe, wash your hands a lot, and I'm always here if you need me. Hey, hey, welcome back. So let's review those questions. So while Nancy was reading Basketball's Magic Lady, what'd you think? Number one, where did Nancy say her family could usually find her? Did you catch that? Number two, this one's a big one. Did Nancy find it easy growing up and wanting to be a female basketball player? Why or why not? And number three, what college did Nancy end up playing women's basketball? So if you need more time, press the pause key. Think about it, get your answers ready, press the pause key again, and meet us over here in the next section where we're gonna reveal the answers. 
I'll see you right there. And we're back. All right. Did you get the answers already? Here we go. Number one, where did Nancy say her family could usually find her? If you said that Nancy said her family could find her down at the playground playing basketball, you got it. Sounds like that's pretty much what she loved to do most of her childhood. Okay, number two. Did Nancy find it easy growing up and wanting to be a female basketball player? And why and why not? Let's see what it says. No, Nancy did not have an easy time wanting to play basketball. Her mother and some of her family thought she needed to be more like the other girls and not play sports. But boy, did she persevere. And boy, did she have a heck of a career. Number three, what college did Nancy end up playing women's basketball? If you said Old Dominion, you're correct. Hey, guys, thanks for joining us on this episode of iStation Reads with Nancy Lieberman. We hope to catch you on another episode. See you soon. Bye. Lori here again. Thanks again for joining us. We hope you enjoyed the story. Remember, tune into our iStation YouTube channel to check out iStation Reads. If you love us, share us on social media. Hope to see you again real soon.